Hello, welcome to the new video from City Inc Express. Today we're going to be fitting the continuous ink system to the Epson 1500W. Uh, it's an A3 printer, so this is a, a brand new printer straight out of the box. We've run a few tests on it, confirmed everything's okay. So it has had a SIS system in it before. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go straight around to the install now. So the first thing I need to do is to remove on this one, uh, you need to remove the cartridge bay cover lid which is this thing here. Uh, so at the moment the printer's been powered on and then it's been switched back off uh, which will mean that this is uh, free so we can move it from side to side. Now normally when you switch the printer on it will lock itself into your position. So what you need to do is switch the printer on as soon as the head starts to move power it off at the wall uh, and this will then be free. So we need to remove this uh, this cartridge bay cover lid here. Uh, so let me just get some more light so you can get a better better view in there. So there's two points that it needs to be unclipped. You've got this area over here uh, on the right and then over here on the left. So this one, it, this side here is actually a lot easier to remove and it will pop straight out. So what you're doing is you're getting your screwdriver in this area here and you're forcing the clip out and it will lift off there. Now at this, this secondary point over here, there's two things that can happen when you do this one. Sometimes you can break the retaining clip on this side. You've got a 50% chance it will either break or it won't break. It depends how, how quickly and how much force or how you actually apply it. So you've got a 50-50 chance. So you need to get your screwdriver in uh, and then you're wedging it. So you, you're putting it in there and then you're wedging it from right to left and so I'm going to open it up now there, so we've actually unclipped it now this has been on and off a couple of times now so I did actually break the retaining clip on this now it will actually go back on if I need it to go back on, it will go back on, but actually the actual retaining clip itself has actually come off on this one. So it is possible to do it with the clip still in place, but for the purposes of the video, uh, I, did, I didn't manage it on this one. So you just need to lock it itself in. Right, so I've removed the cartridge bay lid uh, and we need to install the cartridge pack itself. So I'm going to take the camera back camera back now. Right, so for the cartridge block you need to uh, you need to move the print head over here on the left hand side out of the way and then you're going to slide the cartridge underneath. Now be careful careful of the, the ribbon inside, try not to catch that and then just rest it on the top for a few minutes. Slide your print head back over and put your cartridge in and then press down. So what you need to do is some little locating lugs here. You need to push diagonally down, it's still clip off the uh, lid there. You need to push diagonally, push it down firmly first and you'll hear it click into place but once they're all in, you need to push diagonally down on each one of the locating lugs. Now the reason for that, which I'll show you, is on each one of the cartridges, there's a tiny little lip here. Now this lip must fit in a recess on the printer here. If it's not clicked in, when you switch it on, it will say it's not recognised. So just pop the cartridge block in, push it down firmly, make sure they're clicked in, and then push diagonally down on each one just to double check that actually it's fully in place. So part way down the ink line you'll have this grey arm. You need to turn it over and remove the green backing tape from this. Uh, there's two of them. Now you need to check that there's no twists or kinks coming off your incline, so you've got a nice loop shape coming straight off from the cartridge block here. Now the fixation point is, is central in the middle here, so 
it's exactly in the middle of this part here, this cross section and you're going to press it down firmly like so to get a good addition. Now before we can actually power the printer on you need to manually, we might need to make an adjustment to the incline, you need to manually slide the print head all the way over to the left hand side <coughs> and then all the way back to the right hand side and you're looking to make sure that it's not catching not twisting anywhere and then it can freely move. Now you might need to make an adjustment on the incline over here so to adjust the incline through the clamp you basically you feed it from one side and you can see that loop getting bigger and you just feed the slack by holding onto it and then pulling on the incline. So what this actually does is it makes it uh, looser inside but you can't have it too loose because the bigger uh, the bigger the loop inside it will touch the bottom of the printer base so what you should be looking to do and to adjust these inclines is that print that all the way over to the far right hand side and then pull on your incline now the bit that's dangling down inside the printer should, ha should have bar barely any slack on this piece here so it should be a little bit loose and just run it, run it backwards and forwards again a couple of times and just make sure that it's not twisting, not catching, and not snagging anywhere. Right, it's got a second clip here. You need to remove the green backing tape from this. And you can fix this point, this clip, over here on the right hand side. So you can actually move that clip if you want to. So before I continue, I can see quite a few, if you look down there, quite a few twists in the incline. So I'm going to spin this around just to get, <coughs> excuse me, get rid of those. Right, on top of the continuous ink system, you need to remove the six travel plugs. And then I'm going to power the printer on. Uh, power the printer on while I continue to the next part. So within your accessory pack, uh, you get a bag like this, you need to remove the air filters which are in the pack. Now the air filters will be installed in the SIS system with the narrow pointed end facing upwards. SIS system must be installed with the level, uh, level with the base of the printer. Please don't raise it in the air. If you raise it in the air, it has the potential to flood your printer. So as long as it's on the same level as the base of the printer, you're not going to run into any problems at all. Right, so this system is actually, it's, in, it's installed now. Uh, so I've got no chip recognition issues or anything like that. Now if it, if it comes up and it says it's not recognised first time round, uh, I will double check your clips, make sure everything's clipped into place. There's a reset switch here on the cartridge, you can press that uh, and it will run through uh, <coughs> a cartridge replacement method and you may need to press that a couple of times, you know, but it's worth checking. Just double check that it's fully clipped in and press the reset switch uh, if you need to first time around. So it's just running through a cleaning cycle now, a charging cycle. And then we're going to run some prints off, say. So. So as you can see, it's uh, it's very easy to fit on this this printer model. Right, so I've sent a document to the printer. Now when the cartridges report as empty, the ink levels will go down as normal and uh, they will report empty at some stage. It has to go through the process 
uh, of thinking that a cartridge has been used. It doesn't know that it's got a continuous ink system uh, attached to the printer and it's got potentially 600 ml of ink in the printer. So you will use the reset switch which I'll show you on the chip itself that will re reset the ink levels on all of the cartridges back to 100%. We haven't had to do any nozzle checks or any uh, additional head cleans on this which is always good for the videos. And that's how easy it is to install the continuous ink system from City Ink Express on the Epson 1500W. Uh, so the last thing I'll mention before I cut this video short uh, is the reset switch. So you will see a little button down here on the cartridge block. When it says that cartridges are empty, the printer will stop. You'll just press that button and hold it for three seconds. That will reset the chips back to 100% ink level. And that is how you install the continuous ink system on the Epson 1500W from City Ink Express. Thank you.